we are in midst of some very interesting conversations in the world of payments and i am talking to phil hasley who is the president and ceo of one of the largest payments company in the world aci worldwide phil welcome to fin business thank you very much i thank you for having me thank you so phil uh, we have been uh, listening to a whole lot of interesting inputs about aci and you are also closely following of uh, all the reports and the vision documents of the regulator as well as the recent document couple of days ago which was about deepening the payments in the country what do you think is the kind of opportunity that is to be unveiled in this market um well i i believe there's been significant success to this date and where the indian market is right now is that it's gone from a noble experiment and a trial period to where i think you're seeing volumes and i think you're seeing acceptance that uh it's it's a matter of just maturing a system that makes a lot of sense and uh quite honestly is 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 maybe uh the best system i've seen uh in the world interesting and what is so unique about the system that you have felt um i think this uh immediate payments uh introduction uh, india's has more democratized the access to payments and the acceptance of balances in uh the banking system than any place else i've i've seen in uh, on the globe uh you have anyways made a lot of strategic investments in india including having a thousand people force in india and now that you have taken a strategic investment in mindkit so what are the kind of expectations you had out of this market um we've been involved in probably around two dozen countries we have active projects going on in terms of immediate uh payments uh and in several of those markets we are helping them take together all their digital opportunities uh, all the way from the cash management uh uh workstation approach uh on the corporate side all the way to uh, you know to moving it from a bill pay uh opening up foreign markets uh in terms of connecting endpoints so that people can globalize what they're trying to do or operate on a wider bandwidth than just uh uh the card networks and to allow other networks to sit side by side uh and we've been very uh uh very specific in our support of mobile because we're seeing mobile as the, becoming the dominant um way that ions are you know that money as ions are moved place to place um the atm uh business is one that we still embrace and support but it's one of the 11 or 12 things that we do and we see that as still the most important atom you know so that when there is currency and there's always going to be currency we see that but we also see that as becoming a more and more important digital workstation so that if you do need you know you don't use your phone and you want to use something else and you want direct access to the payment system you the the atm is becoming an important piece of that also so coming to the digital payments uh we have seen in all over the world the governments are trying to increase the penetration of digital payments including the recent uh, document by the reserve bank of india as well which aims at increasing the digital payments by tenfold so uh one of the biggest factors in deepening the digital payments is the cost of payment what kind of role do you see for companies like aci to play in uh reducing the overall cost of payments well our you know we've been around for 44 years and our main mission has been um, um immediate you know a real time payments is, is the best way to say it. so any way any one of our customers wants to Uh, you know generate a real time payment and get it accepted someplace else that is our mission and what's inherent to that mission is that we have to be a low cost producer and that is we our whole mission is to move very large amounts of transactions at a very low 
cost per transaction, but having it, it has to have a breadth of services, abilities in terms of what it does. So it's just not simply moving a dollar from here to there. So in, in, in specifications the uh, Indian government has put out, they've discussed build pay, they've discussed the remittance of, of services from the government and whatnot. Um, and you have to, if you use those two in, as an example, um, even, okay, I can move money person to person and, and that's what, but then I also am going to have to figure out how do I satisfy bill pay or how do I receive or in effect get loaded uh, uh, into my good funds, my bank, money that I can spend that the government is giving me. And uh, if you think about it, the most, in most parts of the world, the most expensive way to do that is with physical cash. The second most expensive way is using checks. The third most expensive way is using uh, ACH, right? And then you work your way up to the card systems and whatnot. It just gets more and more expensive. And as it gets more expensive, you cut out more and more of the population. You have real-time transactions and you can do them, you do them at a fraction of a penny, right? Or I should say rupees, so what, 10 rupees, right? You do it at a, uh, you do it at a very reasonable cost. Then you go from including a you know a plurality of the population to that you can include the vast majority of the population and then the government can redefine its currency in terms of its digital denominator, uh, denominator. you know p people talk about bitcoin right and you know why can't every currency in the world have its own digital transformation but actually be much safer because it's the economy of that nation that's sitting behind it versus god knows what right fantastic that's a very good interesting uh, thought uh, forward i think the uh, leading regulators of the world including the uh, imf and all are talking about how the governments are uh, looking forward to digitize their own currency uh, and stuff like that now going forward to this when it comes to increasing the depth of payments, of course, one is a cost element. The second is the security and the trust that people can have in the payment. So what kind of uh, roadmaps do you see for security and trust in the world of payments now? You know, um, I could actually define trust in a very, and I almost could put security under trust, right? Uh, I, could, I could define trust in a different way. Um, in order for it to be trusted, it has to always be available. It has to always be there. So it's not something, well, it, gee, it's there part of the day or it works part of the time or not. It always has to work, right? Uh, um, it, if, this, if, the, if, if this methodology works and it gets to be five times as big as it's today or it gets to be a hundred times as big as it's today, it has to be scalable. So it has to be able, it can't be an intermediate step. It has, you have to view it as a staircase and you've got to be able to support it all the way up the, uh, 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 the staircase and whatnot. And from a security standpoint, you have to take in other intelligent, um, you know, we're going to have to use artificial intelligence. We're going to have to use a whole series of different things. But as part of that transaction, you're going to have to make the, uh, the customer feel comfortable. You're going to have to make the receiver feel co uh, comfortable that this is a secure transaction that uh, is, is taking place. Fantastic. So that also takes me to another uh, question, especially when it comes to global globality of the payments, which we talked about. How can we create standards of payments which will help us to make payments more global in nature? Well, uh, well, I can tell you ACI's contribution to that. We, we're, we, our products in a hundred countries. We actively uh, interface with eighty of those uh, countries, and we are doing very similar things or supporting very similar activities around the world. As I said, we're involved in at least a couple dozen different immediate payment capabilities that are being put in place. And the ability to connect, say, ASEAN Pay with um, uh, uh, UPI or being able to connect the, uh, uh, you know, the Chinese uh, Union Pay into, uh, we do that as a we do that as a 
normal part of our strategy and we view ourselves, we always tell the world that we don't take sides in the payment system. We view ourselves as an honest broker and we just go and create connectivity where, where connectivity is either required or asked for or whatnot. As a leading payment player, you may also be probably involved with the fintech ecosystems globally. Any such uh, interesting initiatives in the age, area of payments, uh, especially from the fintech side? Yeah, I, I've been around. I've been around payments my whole life, and I've always had tremendous respect for the fintech involvements. Fintechs often create the next generation. The banks knew they should do it, right? But they're busy with regulation. They're busy with whatever. So then the fintechs go and they take it from concept to you know the execution and, and maybe 10% of the execution works uh, but it weeds itself out and then the fintechs land up you know presenting something that makes a lot of sense now normally what takes place is that you know it's it's banking fintech and then it comes back into banking. it comes back into the structure because the the at the end of the day it's you have good money someplace, I have good money someplace, and we need to put our good money back and, and forth. And oftentimes the, the, uh, the innovation doesn't come from, you know, the innovation doesn't come from the big elephant lumbering down the uh, road. It comes from the more agile uh, creature on the side. And I think we're seeing wonderful a uh, uh, wonderful innovation coming out of fintechs. Have uh, you had right any now. engagements with the fintechs as ACI? Yes, we you know, I, you know we constantly speak to fintechs. Now we often sign NDA, so I can't tell you who it is that we uh, talk okay. to and whatnot. But we very we have a very constant appetite because we're very interested in terms of what people are doing and not doing. We'd like to call ourselves a fintech, and kind of half of what we are is a fintech, but the other half of us is a long-standing, you know, uh, payment support company. So, so it's like playing the piano with two hands, right? So we've got where we're, we're, we we keep the historical obligation going, but we like to we like to play with the right hand. Uh, we like to play with the right hand too. So in areas of fraud, in in MindGate's a perfect example. We constantly like to to look at what we think is really innovative. We've done 17 acquisitions in the last 12 wow. years, and uh, a, a, a portion of those have not had revenue or been profitable. They've just been, in our opinion, so smart what they're doing from a fintech standpoint that we said, gee, we'd be better off with them than without them, right? So fintech. tremendous support, tremendous belief in the fintech community. Great. Thank you very much. I think it was a fantastic conversation and uh, I would like to wish you all the best for all your new initiatives in India as well as with the alliances with the fintechs to help taking this business to the next level uh, in the world of payments. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you.